Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about vitamins. Why did we call them vitamins? It's a misnomer. We thought they were vital amines, but they are actually not. We talked about vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B3. B4 does not exist, so we skipped it, and we talked about vitamin B5 and B6 and B7. We skipped B8 because it does not exist. Then we talked about vitamin B9, which is folate, and vitamin B12. Then we talked about vitamin C and vitamin K and vitamin E and vitamin D and vitamin A and even the vitamin-like substance known as choline. Today we shall review all of them very quickly indeed. Let's get started. If you want to dig deeper into each topic, I have separate videos on each of these vitamins. And after today's video, we'll start talking about minerals, including trace elements, zinc, copper, chromium, selenium, you name it. Remember, it's a misnomer. They are organic molecules, micronutrients, essential. Your body does not make them, therefore you have to eat them in the diet. They are coenzymes, i.e. they are assistant to enzymes. Some of them are antioxidants, especially vitamin E. Some of them help you make collagen, especially vitamin C. Some of them replicate cells, helping your bone marrow make blood cells such as red blood cells, especially folate and vitamin B12. Vitamin D is not only a vitamin, it's also a hormone. We divide vitamins into water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins. Water-soluble vitamins include vitamin Bs and vitamin C. Fat-soluble vitamins include vitamin K, E, D, and A. They are coenzymes. Vitamin B1 helps with the decarboxylation and dehydrogenase reactions. What's dehydrogenase? Good old reduction oxidation. B2, reduction oxidation. B3, reduction oxidation. B5, anytime you see CoA, such as acyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA, etc., you should say thank you to vitamin B5. And of course, this has to do with lipid or fat. Lipoic acid, also acyl transfer. Vitamin B6, transamination. The transaminases include aspartate transaminase and alanine transaminase. You can call them transaminases or you can call them amino transferases. Vitamin B7, which is biotin, carboxylation reactions. And these carboxylation groups serve as binding sites for calcium. Vitamin B9 transfer of one carbon unit, which is different from vitamin B1, which transferred two carbon units. Vitamin B12 alkylation reaction, it helps the isomerases, the mutases, and DNA synthesis, just like folate. That's how your cells replicate, such as your red blood cells in the bone marrow. That's why deficiency of this one or this one gives you anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, add them together, pancytopenia. Vitamin C, hydroxylation reaction, especially while making collagen. Choline, which is water-soluble, is for methylation. It's a methyl group donor. Vitamin K, carboxylation, vitamin E, antioxidant, vitamin D, it's a hormone, mineralization of your bones, vitamin A, also antioxidant, rhodopsin of your eye, water-soluble, fat-soluble, pause and review. Let's start with the water-soluble ones, where deficiency is more likely, but toxicity is less likely because they are easily excreted by the kidney. Vitamin B1 is thiamine. Many enzymes, especially the famous dehydrogenases, need thiamine as a cofactor. Deficiency of this one is here, deficiency of this one, deficiency of this one is maple syrup, urine disease. Many alcoholics are malnourished, they forget to eat. Vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency is very common. This can lead to wet beriberi, which affects the heart, dry beriberi, which affects the nerves, Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome which affects the brain. Please do not confuse Wernicke's aphasia, not caused by thiamine deficiency, versus Wernicke's encephalopathy or Wernicke's disease, caused by vitamin B1 deficiency. It's a triad of ophthalmoplasia, gait ataxia, and global confusion. I see double. I cannot walk. I am confused. The acute symptoms of alcoholism can lead to 
Copernicus encephalopathy. Chronically, I can develop Korsakoff syndrome with amnesia due to problems in the mammillary bodies, vicinity of the temporal lobe, proximity to the amygdala and hippocampus. Vitamin B1 deficiency is beriberi, known as kake in Japan, discovered by Dr. Takaki Kanahiro. Takake, that's why it's called kake. Beriberi, which is thiamine deficiency, can be divided into infantile and adult. The adult could be wet, dry, or gastrointestinal. We discussed all of them in great detail before. Here are the signs and symptoms of infantile beriberi. The treatment is in intravenous administration of vitamin B1. Pause and review. Here is dry beriberi, nerve issues, and wet beriberi, cardiomyopathy with edema and CHF. And here is vitamin B1 in one slide. Next, vitamin B2, riboflavin. Don't forget FAD. And if you're talking about the reduced one, which is FADH2, this will give you about two ATP molecules in the electron transport chain. You can say two or you can say one and a half depending on which textbook you're using. So when you think of FAD or FMN, you should say thank you to your riboflavin. If you want to learn about flavoproteins, check out my metabolism playlist. Why did I get vitamin B2 deficiency? Maybe due to decreased intake or maybe because of malabsorption syndrome. Here is the F mnemonic to help you remember riboflavin. F me. And the mnemonic just keeps expanding. Riboflavin deficiency can lead to stomatitis, angular stomatitis, chelosis, and chelitis. Next, vitamin B3 or niacin. It came from tryptophan. What else came from tryptophan? Serotonin. So if I have carcinoid syndrome, all of my tryptophan is going this way to become serotonin, leaving almost no tryptophan to become niacin which means patients who have carcinoid syndrome lack niacin. And when I have niacin deficiency, it's called pellagra. This is vitamin B3 deficiency. Niacin has two functions. At lower dose, it's your good old vitamin B3, nicotinamide. At a higher dose, it's the anti-hyperlipidemic medication. It tends to decrease your total body cholesterol, but it increases the good cholesterol HDL. FAD goes with riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, but NAD and NADP goes with vitamin B3. And this vitamin B3 derivative is gonna give you three ATP molecules in the electron transport chain. You can say three or 2.5 ATPs, depending on which textbook you're using. What's the most common cause of vitamin B3 deficiency? Eating only a corn-based diet which lacks niacin and lacks tryptophan unless it has been artificially enriched. These famous enzymes that required thiamine as a cofactor also require riboflavin and require niacin. Vitamins are precursors to cofactors. So the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, the alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, the branch chain alpha-ketoacid dehydrogenase complex require all of these. I call them my Teflon company. T-F-L-N company. Co. Pearls for the pros. Heart knob disease is a disease where I have a defect in the protein that transports neutral amino acids, including tryptophan. Therefore, I get tryptophan deficiency. If I am deficient in tryptophan, I'll be deficient in his son or daughter, niacin. So I get niacin deficiency, which is pellagra, which is a great name for my future daughter. Come on, Pellagra, how are you today? She will have a happy life until she goes to medical school. Carcinoid syndrome is a cause of Pellagra. Next, we skip vitamin B4 because it does not exist, and we talk about vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. Panto means everywhere, inclusive. Thenic means strength. Basically, this means I am present everywhere. In every food you can imagine, you can find vitamin B5. That's why you will almost never hear of vitamin B5 deficiency. Sources, 
anything deficiency rare biochemically it's important for acyl coa acetyl coa any coenzyme a you can imagine even the famous succinyl coa which belongeth to the tca cycle next vitamin b6 pyridoxin it's important for the transamination reactions alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase or aminotransferases but it's not just about transamination it's also deamination decarboxylation making sphingomyelin of your nerves very important and much more here is ast and alt the function please pause and review since vitamin b6 helps make sphingomyelin which makes myelin therefore this pyridoxin deficiency is gonna lead to what nerve problems peripheral neuropathy and since we need vitamin b6 to make heme which makes hemoglobin of your red blood cells without it i get anemia the enzyme ala synthase is now history and since cystathionin synthase is also history without vitamin b6 as a coenzyme i'll get homocystinemia and homocystinuria increasing my risk of myocardial infarctions strokes dvts low iq lens subluxation joint contracture Marfanoid body habitus, kyphosis, and osteoporosis. Oh, by the way, you can download all of these doozy handwritten notes on my website, medicosisperfectsnellis.com. Here is everything you need to know about pyridoxin in one slide. Don't forget the famous TB medication isoniazid can lead to vitamin B6 deficiency. Therefore, if you prescribe this medication to any patient, you should also give that patient pyridoxin. Otherwise, the poor patient might develop all of these symptoms because you were a doofus with a stethoscope. Next, biotin, which is vitamin B7. Avidin is present in raw egg whites. It inhibits the absorption of biotin. Why do I need biotin? It's a cofactor for carboxylation reactions. Anytime you see carboxylase in your textbook, you should say thank you to biotin. Biotin will also help you make proteins and replicate your cells. It's present in all of these foods, but do not eat raw eggs. The yolk of the egg has biotin. Egg white? Mm -mm. Symptoms of biotin deficiency include dermatitis glossitis, alopecia entritis. Next, vitamin C, ascorbic acid. Where do we absorb iron? Well, remember the mnemonic. First, you iron your clothes, then you fold them, and then put them in the closet. Iron is absorbed in the duodenum. Have you ever wondered why is iron absorbed here, which is the first part of the intestine? Because iron requires the presence of vitamin C and the acid of your stomach in order to be absorbed. And since the stomach can barely absorb anything, iron will be absorbed in the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. You need the acid of the stomach and vitamin C to reduce the ferric iron into the ferrous iron. You cannot absorb this, but you can absorb this. Fe2 goes into the bloodstream. Fresh fruits and vegetables, especially citrus fruits, are rich sources of vitamin C. Vitamin C has many functions. Functions. Do not forget collagen, please. Which step of collagen synthesis? The hydroxylation of proline and lysine residues. So with vitamin C deficiency, what do I get? Scurvy. Do you think I'll be able to make collagen? No. Who's gonna suffer? Any tissue that has collagen, including blood vessels, so they get weaker, and I leak blood. Petechia purpura ecchymoses on the skin, bleeding gums, bleeding skin, you name it. And here are more symptoms of vitamin C deficiency, which we talked about in detail in my video on vitamin C. Quiz time! Why do we use vitamin C to treat methemoglobinemia? Answer. It's easy. Methemoglobinemia is a condition where the normal Fe2 in the hemoglobin became Fe3. Fe3 cannot bind oxygen. Only Fe2 binds O2. So if I now have the abnormal ferric iron in my hemoglobin, we call this methemoglobinemia. Meta means change of the hemoglobin. Methemoglobinemia. Is this normal? No, it's not. What do I need to do? I need to reduce this Fe3 back to Fe2, which will bind O2. How do you do this? By a reduction reaction, reductase, which is aided by vitamin C. That's why you give vitamin C to treat methemoglobinemia. You also give the patient methylene blue. Patient with methemoglobinemia can experience cyanosis. Mnemonic time. When the patient is blue, give methylene blue.
Get it? Next, vitamin B9, folate. Functions, transfer of one carbon unit. Function, DNA synthesis, cell replication. Don't forget my green leafy vegetables. We need vitamin B12 and folate in order for homocysteine to become methionine and in order for you to replicate your cells, i.e. DNA synthesis. And that's why if I lack folate or B12, what do I get? Lack of DNA synthesis. I cannot replicate my cells. I can suffer from anemia, leukopenia, or thrombocytopenia, put them together, pancytopenia. Next, vitamin B12, cobalamin. Why do you call it cobalamin? Because it's made of cobalt. Where do we absorb folate? Jejunum. How about cobalamin? Terminal ileum. And that's why if I have Crohn's disease and it was so bad that they had to remove my terminal ileum surgically. Do you think I'll be able to absorb vitamin B12? No. What's going to happen? Vitamin B12 deficiency. Anemia. Leukopenia. Thrombocytopenia. Pancytopenia. And neurological symptoms. Sources of vitamin B12 are many. Strict vegans who do not consume fish, meat, milk, eggs, organ meat, clams, etc. are at a higher risk than the normal population of developing B12 deficiency. This, of course, does not mean that most vegans have B12 deficiency. It just means that they are more likely. Many factors have to align together so that you can absorb vitamin B12. A problem in any of them can end up with vitamin B12 deficiency. Examples include being malnourished, chronic sialadenitis, pernicious anemia, achlorhydria, gastrectomy, chronic pancreatitis, prolonged use of antibiotics, the parasite Diphenobothrium latum, malabsorption syndrome, ileal resection after Crohn's disease. If I lack folate or B12, homocysteine will not become methionine. What's going to happen to homocysteine level in the blood? It will go up. And in the urine, it will go up, homocysteinemia, homocysteinuria, risk of heart attacks, strokes, DVTs, low IQ, lens subluxation, joint contractures, etc. Here's a very important comparison between folate and B12. Only B12 deficiency causes neurological symptoms. Only B12 deficiency elevates the level of methylmalonyl-CoA. Both folate deficiency and B12 deficiency can lead to anemia, pancytopenia, and homocysteinemia. Pause and review. We're done with the water-soluble vitamins. Let's review the fat-soluble vitamins. The most important two slides about the fat-soluble vitamins is this one and this one. Remember, in order for you to absorb fat or fat-soluble vitamins, three organs have to be healthy. You need a healthy liver and gallbladder and biliary system. You need lovely pancreas and a doozy intestine to do the actual absorption. Therefore, liver disease, bile disease, pancreatic disease, intestinal disease can lead to malabsorption of fat and fat-soluble vitamins. The fat-soluble vitamins are K, E, D, and A. If I like vitamin K, I bleed. If I like vitamin E, I get anemia with acanthocytes. I get neurological symptoms and myopathy. I may lose my dorsal column of the spinal cord, leading to loss of vibration, proprioception, fine touch, and fine pressure sensations, as well as two-point discrimination. Vitamin D deficiency can lead to bone problems. In the young, it's called rickets. In the old, it's called osteomalacia. Vitamin A deficiency equals nectalopia. Keratomalacia. Vitamin K. Vitamin K is important for gamma carboxylation of the coagulation factors. It's important for calcium binding proteins as well as oxidative phosphorylation. So normally, vitamin K makes me clot my blood after injury. It increases bone calcification, which is amazing, and it decreases soft tissue calcifications because soft tissue calcifications are evil. Ergo, its deficiency can lead to bleeding and bone problems and abnormal vessel calcifications. Here is the process of vitamin K gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residue from glue to gla. Look at all of this carboxylation action. The lovely epoxide reductase is inhibited by warfarin. That's why it's a blood thinner. It can lead to bleeding. Which specific coagulation factors need this gamma carboxylation? 2, 7, 9, 10. Causes of vitamin K deficiency. I'm not eating it or I have something interfering with its absorption, or I have a problem in the liver or biliary system, or a pancreatic problem or a gut problem. These are the three organs needed to absorb fat and fat-soluble vitamins. Or 
I have liver failure. No liver, no gamma carboxylation because it takes place in the liver. Or if I'm taking warfarin, which inhibits the gamma carboxylation. Vitamin K, normal functions, abnormal levels. Symptoms of deficiency. Normally, it's carboxylation, COO. Abnormally, it's BBC. And here is vitamin K deficiency in one slide. Pause and review. If I have vitamin K deficiency, platelet count, normal. Bleeding time, normal. PT and PTT, both are prolonged. Next, vitamin E. Antioxidant, big time. We'll see who's gonna remember this for my upcoming video on selenium. Vitamin E is important for your red blood cells, your muscles, your nerves, and your retina. Precisely because it's an antioxidant. Normal functions, symptoms of deficiency. Each one corresponds with the symptom. And here are the symptoms of vitamin E deficiency. Pause and review. Be very careful because vitamin E excess inhibits gamma carboxylation, which means it acts as if it's warfarin. And that's why there is an interaction between vitamin E and warfarin. So if you prescribe warfarin to your patient, tell them not to take vitamin E supplement supplements. Vitamin K and vitamin E are kinds of opposite. Vitamin K is pro-coagulation. Vitamin E is pro-bleeding. Deficiency of vitamin K, I bleed. Deficiency of vitamin E, I get a hemolytic anemia. Vitamin K excess, hemolytic anemia. Vitamin E excess, bleeding. Next, vitamin D. When you hear of ergosterol, dehydrocholesterol, think of vitamin D, ergocalciferol and cholecalciferol, respectively, thanks to ultraviolet light. Is it UVA or UVB? Well, UVA is for your KOH. It's the wood lamp, but UVB is the one that activates your vitamin D. Also, it's the one that increases your risk of skin cancer. This pathway of making the active form of vitamin D, calcitriol, is very important. You need your skin, you need your liver, you need your gut, you need sunlight to provide you with UVB. The liver has the 25 hydroxylase and then the kidney has the 1 alpha hydroxylase boosted by parathyroid hormone. Magnesium is a cofactor here and here. How does the active form of vitamin D act on the target organ like your bone, your gut, your kidney, etc. by zinc? fingers. We'll talk about these in greater detail in my upcoming video on zinc, because after we finish talking about vitamins, we'll start talking about minerals. Symptoms of vitamin D deficiency are many. Don't forget bone problems. Coming up next, vitamin A. Also works by zinc fingers. Also the receptor is inside the cell. Don't forget vitamin A can terminate a pregnancy. It's also teratogenic. Functions of vitamin A and symptoms of deficiency. Don't forget the night blindness, the metaplasia, the abnormal keratinization, keratomalacia of my cornea, bone and teeth problems, dry skin, dry mouth, dry eyes. Symptoms of vitamin A deficiency. Pause and review. If you need to recall these, please refer to my video on vitamin A. Next, choline, the vitamin-like molecule that is water-soluble and important because from choline you make acetylcholine and sphingomyelin and lecithin. Choline removes fat from the liver, decreasing the accumulation of lipids in the liver, i.e. choline is lipotropic. And therefore, choline deficiency equals accumulation of fat in the liver, fatty liver disease, increased ALT, muscle weakness. Let's review water-soluble vitamins in one slide and then the fat-soluble vitamins. Vitamin B1 deficiency can lead to wet beriberi, dry beriberi, wernicke korsakoff syndrome. Vitamin B2 deficiency equals stomatitis, chelitis, angular stomatitis, chelosis, etc. Vitamin B3 Three Ds of pellagra, diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, vitamin B6, neuropathy, and sideroblastic anemia. Vitamin B7 deficiency, especially if you eat raw egg whites, can lead to dermatitis, glossitis, alopecia, enteritis. Folate deficiency, megaloblastic anemia. B12 deficiency, megaloblastic anemia and neuropathy. Scurvy, bleeding and corkscrew hair, important. Choline deficiency, fatty liver disease, muscle weakness. Next, the fat-soluble vitamins deficiency. Vitamin K deficiency, bleeding. Vitamin E deficiency equals retinopathy, anemia with acanthocytes, 
peripheral neuropathy, vitamin D deficiency, rickets or osteomalacia, vitamin A deficiency, nectalopia and keratomalacia. Do you want to learn more about the thyroid hormone, the estrogens, the insulins, their type, and how to calculate the dose for a patient with diabetes and what medications affect bone health? Then download my endocrine pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a course for the acid-base imbalance. It will teach you about HAGMA, NAGMA, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis, base excess, base deficits, compensated, uncompensated, partially compensated, you name it. You will even learn about the serum anion gap, the serum osmolar gap, the urine anion gap, the stool osmolar gap, and much more. Download it today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you do not wish to download my premium videos and would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button below this video or the link in the description and choose the highest tier. You will gain access to more than 300 premium medicosis videos. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click the join button, support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.